Calculating independent events is actually pretty similar to calculating mutually exclusive events. The difference is that these, uh, when you're talking about independent events, the events don't actually um, affect each other. So choosing one thing in an independent event doesn't change whether or not you're going to choose something else uh, or choosing uh, something in a related event when you're trying to find the total probability. When we're choosing uh, mutually exclusive events, when we're figuring out the total events, we take the probability of one event and add it to the probability of the other. When we're dealing with independent events, what we do is we take the probability of one event, say the probability of A, and we multiply it by the probability of B. So the probability of A and B, assuming they're not mutually exclusive, is probability of A, or the probability of the first event, multiplied by the probability of the second event. So what we're talking about, usually when we're talking about a probability, we're talking about something smaller than 100%, right? We're talking about uh, effectively a fraction. So when we multiply these together, we get something even smaller, right? If we have a fraction multiplied by a fraction, we get a smaller fraction because we only have a portion of a portion. And that's, that's what you should expect to find. If you have a certain chance of doing something, then your chances of doing it and something else that's also unlikely are even less than they are of doing just one or the other. Let's do an example. Let's say, um, let's say we're talking about lunch. Everybody likes to talk about lunch, right? Say for lunch, um, there are two sets of possibilities. For your drink, you can either get milk or juice or soda or water. And then let's say for your meal, your food, you can get a burger or a sandwich or chicken or pasta. So your chances of picking any one of these four choices for drinks, so the probability of any particular drink is one out of four or uh, 0.25 or 25%, depending on how you want to think about it. Your chances of picking any one of these four uh, foods for to eat are going to be the same. Let me move this over just so I give myself a little room. Oops. There we go. Now we got to move it over. Um, your chances of picking any one of these four foods to eat are exactly the same. So the probability of your food is also going to be 1 out of 4, or 0.25. Now, the chances of picking any one drink, say milk, and also any one sandwich, are going to be whatever the probability of the drink is, so the probability of the drink, multiplied by the probability of the food. So if we want to know what the probability of milk and probability of sandwich would be, then we need to take the probability of the milk, which is 0.25, and multiply it by the probability of the sandwich, which is also 0.25, which would actually probably be easier to do in fraction form because we can just multiply straight across, right? So we'd have 1 fourth times 1 fourth, or 1 sixteenth chance of being able to get, of picking milk and sandwich. So we take the probability of the first thing and we multiply it by the probability of the second thing to get the probability of the two of them together. And we can see that the chances of getting them both at the same time are significantly less than the chances of getting either one or the other. You know, because there's obviously a lot more options. If all I'm saying is I have to get a sandwich, there's four different ways I could get a sandwich. I could get a sandwich with milk or with juice or soda or water, right? But there's only one way I can get a sandwich with milk. So that combined probability is significantly less than the probability of either one of the two choices on their own.